Hello everybody, welcome to the first pre-modern or old type 2 uh, full-blown video on this channel where we have got the deck tech, we have got a little bit of nostalgia, a little bit of my memories, how I played the very first type 2 tournament and uh, then we will have the a gameplay featuring this deck in Forge against some pre-modern decks. So this is of course not the deck that I would have built today if I went to a pre-modern tournament, but this is, to my best of knowledge, to the best memory that I can have, is the deck that I had in late 2002. So uh, what's important to understand here is that I was a freshman back then, uh, my stipend was somewhere around $10, and uh, my budget for entertainment was very limited. So very often buying a new card or buying a new music CD was the choice that I had to make. And uh, I was immediately drawn to this idea of a blue and green deck that had this synergy. I really liked Odyssey. Of course, the foil lands, something that I added much later. I didn't have any foil lands. But as I was saying, I didn't have any rares. And uh, back then, what people actually played was City of Brass. But I never had any Cities of Brass for quite a long time. So that's why in the mana base we have got 10 forests, because it's more important, in my opinion, to have islands. That's why we have 11 islands. And that was usually enough. Uh, next, we had four Rootwallas. Rootwallas are amazing creatures because they usually cost you zero to play, and that's insanely good, right? Because this is a creature that you can pump for two, essentially it can be 3-3. Three, three. And uh, I believe that uh, the reason why I liked Blue-Green Madness so much is that it utilizes resources in a very, very optimal way. Because you have got your graveyard, you can have discard, uh, you can use mana, you can use your hand, you can use your uh, flashback abilities. And uh, these things just fit together so well. I remember reading an article from the Sideboard magazine where R&D members actually said that yes, they did play it as they said, but they never thought that Blue and Green Madness would be such a prevalent archetype. So that's very interesting by itself. Uh, Wild Mongrel is a card that I loved even before we had Blue Green Madness itself. I just played a mono green deck. Um, it was based on a pre constructed deck. It was a green threshold, I believe. Was there blue? I'm not entirely sure. Um, I don't think so. But the thing is, is that, yeah, it's a very good card, right? So the Grizzly Bear essentially, but you can pump it and uh, you can even make it change the color. Very often that would serve as a basis for avoiding terror, for example, right? So uh, this is for that, you know, color matters block of invasion, which was preceding the Odyssey block. It, Odyssey block is definitely my favorite block of pre-modern, maybe just because this was the day uh, these were the days when I played Magic a lot, really a lot. I would just come to an LGS and um, sometimes I just spent a lot of time there, uh, not really doing anything. Uh, my binder, I didn't really even have a binder for quite a long time, so I couldn't really trade with the guys. Um, a lot of people were interested in pre-tournament playtesting and I usually had rather weak decks, so uh, very often there was none of that, but I clearly remember how I spent uh, easily, you know, 8-10 hours a day at an LGS and, uh, you know, I still felt good and uh, I still wanted to come back for more. Just playing games, sometimes watching other people play, uh, sometimes just talking about magic, so this was a really, really great moment. Um, so, yeah, the next thing, next thing after Wild Mongrel, uh, we have got Arrogant Worm. So, Arrogant Worm, Madness for 3 mana, Trample for 4. Again, it's not really, really good, but this is another card that you can play. And uh, my favorite always was, and I think still is, Roar of the Worm. So, you can have this absolutely huge 6-6 six, six green worm creature token into play. So, you know, I thought about it and I just looked at it, I, it said flashback 4, right? So flashback 4, 6, 6. And 
is just so good for some reason, because a card that is played from a graveyard is already a card that you discarded. So I immediately thought, okay, for example, you discard a card to pump it, so you're already getting some benefits, and uh, then from your graveyard you're able to play this card again. It's just so good. It felt really, really powerful back then to me, and uh, to many other people as well. Um, perhaps I was a little bit overvaluing these cards, but I still think that they're great. So, yeah, these are the creature. This is the basic creature package. And um, in addition to Wild Mongrel, because, you know, you cannot have, let's say, six or seven copies of them, we've got beautiful Aqua Amoeba. Um, it's not as good. Of course, you know, there can be some shenanigans with switching power and toughness until end of turn. Uh, but, you know, I never got to pump them because there could be this idea. I think there was a card that gave your creature plus one plus five or something like that. You know, there could be things um, that are cheaper to pump toughness rather than power, but I have never made it work. So yeah, essentially it is like a wild mongrel, but you know, three one, yeah, it's not perfect, but it's a beautiful card, isn't it? And um, Speaking of creatures, there is a very important card, which is a later edition, yeah, and uh, here we have got this um, FNM copy from 2007, really beautiful picture by um, Rebecca Gway. But what I'm saying is that Wonder was what made this deck actually work, because when your creatures have flying, it really becomes quite scary for your opponent. And uh, one more thing that, you know, we also really don't cast for combat is Murphal Clutter. This is unfortunately not the seventh edition copy, which I would prefer, even though I absolutely love Ron Spencer. But yeah, it just feels a little bit wrong to have uh, this art over here. So yeah, Murphal Clutter can draw a card and choose and discard a card. 1-1 one, one for 2 mana. And, um, you know, it's not too good, but it gives us this virtual card advantage which we need. And yeah, of course, Wander, you very rarely cast him. You usually prefer to have him in the graveyard, but why not? Because 2-2 two, two flying for 4 mana is not that good, but not terrible either. And uh, speaking of non-creature spells, there aren't that many of them. Uh, there is, of course, the absolutely wonderful careful study card. So draw two cards for one mana, then discard two cards from your hand. Why not discard a Root Wallow, for instance, and Borrow of the Worm, or maybe, uh, let's say, uh, Deep Analysis and Wonder. So yeah, all of these are good choices. A very, very fast, very powerful card advantage. Careful Study is a card that was later played in some other archetypes, even, for instance, uh, Reanimator, one of its iterations. Maybe not the most powerful one, but definitely quite an interesting one. Uh, yeah, next we had Deep Analysis. So Deep Analysis, uh, by itself, you know, you can even cast it for four mana in late game, perhaps, why not? But its flashback is especially interesting. So two mana and pay three life, yes, because Torment is about pain and suffering. So, yeah, but two mana... Uh, flashback, three life, doesn't really matter that much. Really, really good card. I actually maybe had uh, not two, but three copies. But again, as I said, as for the copies, I cannot clearly remember the number of copies I had of those cards. Again, I remember the play sets that I had, but some of the more intricate things I don't remember exactly. Uh, yeah, so since, you know, I tried to pretend that this is a Controlish deck, even though it clearly isn't in many ways. I called it aggro control. It's a little bit silly, I know, but still, there was the counter package. Yeah, so there was the uh, counter spell itself. Here we can see three copies. But in addition to that, we also had a very important card, and some people argued that it was an probably very important card. Uh, that made Blue and Green Madness stand out, that made it uh, such a good deck. Because Circular Logic 
costs only one mana to play. Essentially, yes, because you will have a lot of cards in your graveyard and uh, madness for one blue. So this essentially means that it's a full-fledged counter spell in most cases for just one blue mana, which is incredibly good, of course, because remember that in the 7th edition we didn't have counter spell, but in the 8th edition they decided that two blue mana for a hard counter is too good, so they gave us mana leak, and then they invented a cancel card, which was, of course, much worse than the two mana counter spell. Strictly worse, of course. And um, in addition to that, finally, the card that was my personal choice, and I remember that some people disagreed with it, but some people actually valued this and uh, believed that it was a really smart strategy because, you know, it's all about tempo, it's all about uh, being very mana efficient. Unsummon, not the A, the burst card that cost one more, but had this accumulated knowledge effect or Kindle or Flame Burst, you know, whatever. Uh, so this burst card um, actually bounced as many creatures as the number of copies that you had in your graveyard. But yeah, this one uh, is just our basic unsummon, but for one mana. So uh, there it is. How did I do with this deck? I didn't do too well. I remember that I uh, lost most of my matches, but I definitely won um, one match against Elves, and uh, some people even said that, yeah, it was a pretty good win, because uh, usually in that matchup, odds were stacked against uh, Blue Green Madness, but yes, this is what I did. And um, I lost to Beasts, uh, there were also, as far as I remember, Zombies, and maybe Clerics, I don't remember exactly, but yeah, most people were definitely playing uh, some kind of tribal deck from Onslaught, and I was still in that, you know, early 2002, uh, before the release of Onslaught, and uh, this was a really great time for me. So now let's take a look at how this deck actually performs, uh, how it works against some other decks in Forge. So before we go to the games, let me remind you that there is the Patreon page for this channel, link in the description. And you can either choose the uncommon tier, your name in the credits, this is to support the channel and your support is highly appreciated, or you can even go for the rare tier and in that case we'll make a custom video. It will either be a uh, deck tech and uh, maybe some video of me playing the deck that you want me to, or perhaps some other topic either from old school magic or pre-modern. And let me remind you that we've got our current goal, 10 patrons in 2024, and we're currently at rank three, which is if be for free, not that bad, but we will certainly get to Leviathan with your help. I know we can do it. So let us play against a deck that is a mono black deck. It is a very aggressive deck. It has some what we call suicide elements, meaning that it will be able to um, cast some powerful creatures, but at the cost of damaging itself. And, um, you know, it's not very relevant very often, um, because life is just a resource for such mono black decks, and, um, of course, it hopes to defeat the opponent faster than the drawbacks kill it. And, uh, yeah, I just love Sarcomancy. It's a, such an elegant design, and, um, as you can see, deals damage if there are no zombies in play. And there are several zombies in this deck, so it's not even the only card that could be the hope. So, okay, 5-4. Now, the question is, and don't forget that Wild Mongrel can become black, right? So we can also get this bonus. Mm, what can we do? We can pump it technically to 4 with one card, uh, then 5, 6. I don't know, it might be too much. But on the other hand, two cards, and uh, when this drawback kicks in, I think that's not a bad idea. So, you know, let's try that. Okay, yeah, I will block. And uh, what I will do is that I will... Okay, got to be careful here. I will discard a card that I would, of course, always want to discard uh, to play it for zero mana. So, uh, black, and uh, yeah, let's discard a land which I don't really need. And if I calculated everything correctly, yeah, so there is the 6-6 six, six mongrel. And yeah, our opponent has no creatures right now. 
So next turn, if all is okay, we will be able to cast Roar of the Worm. So I think it's turning out fine for now. Uh, Diabolic Edict, yeah, I will get rid of one of the Rutwallas. Not that relevant, actually. So yeah, time for the glorious token of Worm. 6-6. Six, six. Attack with all. And yeah, here is the zombie, but you know, doesn't look so scary anymore. Uh, if this stuff is cast during some of the first turns, then yes, of course, we would be afraid. But uh, like that, it doesn't even matter at all. So yeah, just for the pleasure, we wait. We're still alive. Okay, uh, yes. So just killed itself with the Sarcomancy. Uh, there is no way we would keep uh, no lander. And, and here, what don't we need that much? Maybe the mongrel, maybe the mongrel. Not entirely sure. The second mongrel, perhaps. Okay, so yeah, that's a good start for our opponent. And yeah, so should we cast Rutwala right away? Uh, why not? I think there is no harm in doing so. And yeah, here is Unholy Strength. Again, we have seen something similar. Of course, you gotta love these auras. They're really nice, but of course, it's very problematic because even the unsummoned can kill uh, that card. And uh, I think that's going to be fine. I just wish we had more mana. And our opponent's actually damaging themselves as well. And look, didn't attack. Okay, so yeah, here is the horror against us. All right. So can we get really bold and attack? Okay. And I will even play that. And I will even play that. Why not? And just in case. Okay. Any attacks? Yes, okay, attacking with the shadow guy. So shadow creatures, as you remember, are completely non-interactive, meaning that they cannot block and they will not be able to be blocked by the others. Yeah, so there were white and black shadow cards. And, um, you know, uh, nowadays it would probably be considered bad game design. And, okay, of course I will counter with a dredge, because that would be scary. But what I'm trying to say is that Shadow is just... Wait, what happened? Didn't I counter that? Counter with the Dredge and Rest Controller pays... Oh, silly me. I had zero cards in my graveyard. So yeah, of course our opponent was able to pay zero. Okay, let's hope we get a land. No, we don't even get a land. Oh, this is so embarrassing. Okay. So, attack with everything. I will discard Roar of the Worm. I will pump the Mongrel. And our opponent is in a pretty bad position. But for some reason, still decides to attack. What's up with that? I don't know. Um, well, okay, but was it a smart move? I'm not sure. Okay, Sarcomance again. Well... Some wrong decisions have been made, as I can tell. All right, so yeah, here are the blockers. Here are the blockers. Who do we want to get rid of? We really, really want to get rid of Withered Dredge, so I will pump that. Uh, because I really hope that next turn we get a land and we'll be able to cast Roar of the Worm, so I don't want Withered Dredge to remove that from the game. Um, this, probably, will be our way to pump it. And, okay, I'm trying to understand who is actually blocking it. So, yeah, the Sarcomancy token. Is it the one with Unholy Strength? Oh, no. Okay, the usual one. All right. So, yeah, I think that's fine. Wait. Not what I expected. Okay, I don't know what happened here. Don't judge me too harshly. Um, really, really didn't expect that to happen didn't expect to lose that game 
So some wrong decisions were made. And of course, the worst decision was that I decided to play circular logic thinking that it's a hard counter, but no, because we had zero cards in the graveyard. So yeah, a lot of things to keep track of in this game. Um, yes. Okay, let's discard one island. Don't really need it for now. And yeah, now I think that, again, it's not the best outcome for me. We've got the Withered Wretch, which is terrible. And one more. Doesn't even attack, look. So, um, will I get blocked? Let's just try. Let's just try. Okay, I didn't get blocked, so that's interesting. And Arrogant Worm. All right. Yeah, Arrogant Worm should be quite scary. Oh, Exile Wander from the Graveyard. Yeah, we had Wander in the Graveyard. Okay, but it's not something that I could do. So, of course, of course, uh, he didn't block because I had Wander in the Graveyard. All right, then. So, um, yeah, now, now it would be uh, really, really silly to attack because there are two Black Knights against us. I don't know, because against Black Knight... Oh, can we do something funny? Maybe unsummon one of the Knights? Yeah, sounds like a plan. Sounds like a plan. Okay, so I will attack. Of course, this is how you would block. You know, our opponent thinks that we're silly, but what we're going to do instead is bounce one of the knights. This means that, you know, don't forget that this is trample, so two points of damage will also be there, right? And now, as our opponent is trying to cast this bounced knight, and okay, here is Bad Moon. Um, I don't know, do I want to counter Bad Moon? Or do I want to counter the Black Knight? Yeah, that's that's a bit tricky. Yeah, I'm afraid I will have to counter Bad Moon. But wait. Okay, that's really stupid. In response, I will have to discard the... Okay, I do play Circular Logic. Okay. Okay, yeah, it is countered, all right. Yeah, I had to discard Murfolk Looter. Terrible decision, right? And yeah, here is the Black Knight. You know, let him live. Okay. Uh, yes, what can we do now? Now, it wouldn't make sense to attack with Aquamoeba. So do something like this and uh, wander just as a maybe chum blocker. Okay, exile circular logic from the graveyard. Our opponent doesn't attack. Uh, here is the shadow guy, however. So I can easily attack with the flyer. I can also attack with arrogant worm, which is what I will do. So both of these. Right, so our opponent is still afraid, still scared to block, I guess. Right, exile the cards from my graveyard, I think that's the right move. And okay, attacking with this non-interactive guy. All right. And there is one more shadow guy. Yeah, so at the end of turn, but you know, it's not the end of turn, just in response, doesn't matter that much. I will play Arrogant Worm. So don't you just love playing these creatures as instants? This is just so wrong in terms of um, magic rules, I would say. Really feels game-breaking in many ways. Uh, yeah, so then I will just draw two cards. Okay. And yeah, here is the damage, because these guys... Look, now, the story with the creature type here is really weird, because, okay, it says beast. There are a lot of beasts, there are a lot of um, cards that were 
later changed to beasts, but if you look at the modern text, it's actually a horror, right? So Dothi horror. It is a creature which has creature type of horror, but not the beast. I mean, yes, he doesn't look like a beast, but why not keep that? I don't know. Black beasts? Are there any black beasts? I'm absolutely sure that there are some black beasts. Okay, so yeah, since this stuff is non-interactive, as you see, we win. All right, then. So, yeah, pretty embarrassing loss in game uh, two on my part, but that's fine. So let's play against a Ponza deck. So how does it fare against a mono-red Ponza? Let's see. It's not exactly the same thing as the red deck wins. So there is, of course, the aggro part, there is the burn part, but there is also the land destruction part. I absolutely love Ponza. It's an archetype that I have played myself some point in time, and uh, there are some interesting interactions there. And I just love Mono Red. Some people don't, but it's not such a silly uh, archetype as some people may want you to believe. So... Yeah, Mongrel or Aquamoeba. Uh, of course, Mongrel is always better. Okay, so there is the first Mog Fanatic. Do you want to sacrifice the second one? Oh, this is embarrassing for our opponent. This is embarrassing because, yeah, we will just discard one card that we would have discarded anyway. Now, the question is, do I want to discard three cards for the Mongrel? Probably not. That would be too much. Okay, you win. You know, three cards against my mongrel. And here is the Mishra. Cannot escape Mishras. Cannot escape Mishras. They are everywhere. They are in old school magic. They are in pre modern. And uh, yeah, they are still quite fearsome. Okay, so we've got two Roar of the Worms. We've got Wonder, which is important. So our creatures are flying. And, uh, yeah, I think I will want to save this Aqua Amoeba. So I will cast that. So it's not that our opponent is able to pay that much. Okay. Doesn't attack. Dwarven Miner. Destroy target non-basic land. So, yeah, that wouldn't really work. And one more Mog Fanatic. Oh, okay. I think I will switch back to 1-3. Again, the way that our opponent is throwing Mog Fanatics is just too aggressive, I think. Got to slow down a little bit here. Uh, yes, so let's see. Let's see. What do we have in our hand? Oh, wait. This is the hand that I've got. Yeah, I will just attack for one. Because now we can hard cast deep analysis. We don't need to use flashback for that. A sulfuric vortex. Um, yeah, I think this will actually work to our advantage, maybe in some way, because we do have the advantage on board. What's really interesting about this symmetric card is that it will first damage your opponent. So that's why it really makes sense to do that. And now, you know, since red will have a tough time fighting against creatures with six toughness, I think we will just attack like this. And uh, yeah, I think it's getting very near the end. Because our creatures are just flying, so I am attacking for the win. Okay, it was an easy one. Let's see if the second game is just as lucky for me. So there is Jekyll Pop. You know, I always like this card. It's an elegant design. And uh, look, by the way, the foils here in Forge, I specifically selected it. Uh, this particular copy. Yeah, they, they look all right. No animation of shiny stuff, but, you know, still captures the foiliness, I would say. Okay, so careful study. Always exciting to cast. And there's some very good pulls here. So it doesn't even attack, doesn't want to sacrifice Jekyll Pop against this Zero mana root wallen. Uh, wasteland doesn't do any good to our opponent either. So let's maybe play more folkluder. Will he get destroyed? Yeah, he will get destroyed. But that's okay because Lightning Bolt is a pretty important card for our opponent. 
Now I think we'll just attack. So there is no block, as you can see. And that's fine, again. I'm fine with that. So, four mana, and we do have Roar of the Worm. Flashback. Yeah, I just feel that it's such a strong thing against red. So yeah, we do have Avalanche Riders, destroying the color that I have less of. It makes total sense. Because now I don't even have any blue sources, which is pretty bad. But yeah, I will attack, because it's going pretty fast. Uh, did pay the Echo price for Avalanche Riders. Such a beautiful card. It was one of those Invitational cards um, designed by the winner of the Invitational, as far as I remember. Other cards include Finko, Piccola, meaning Meddling Mage, and Shadow Mage Infiltrator, and also Rootwater Thief. So very nice tradition, and uh, it's kind of sad that they abandoned it. Um, the last card like that was Dark Confidant with Bob Meyer. If I'm not mistaken, maybe there was something else after that, but yeah, definitely they're not doing that nowadays. And yeah, let's see. We can attack, which is what we will do. Now our opponent should be, of course, scared. So we're keeping an eye on um, what our opponent is casting. So, you know, I can deal with that. Two damage from Jekyll Pop. Stone Rain. Now... <sighs> Yeah, I wouldn't really want to do that, but the problem is that next turn I will not be able to use Unsummon or anything of the sorts. That's why I did that. Okay, yeah, I don't have one more mana that is needed to hardcast Roar of the Worm. So, I don't know. Should I just attack? He will chump block. Well, I guess that's fine. But it still has a lot of creatures. Still, there are a lot of creatures, and um, okay, so Jekyll Pup, and we win, we win. All right, so let's play one last game. Uh, what should we play against? So how about a control deck? You know, I wouldn't risk playing against Replenish because I'm sure that our opponent doesn't um, play Replenish properly, and uh, yeah, doesn't play Powder Keg, but Powder Keg is not really central to this deck. So, let's see. Land still this um, blue and white control. A little bit similar to the deck in Old School Magic, because there is a ton of good counter magic and white removal. But, on the other hand, in my personal opinion, a little bit more interesting, um, because there is this, you know, standstill, which essentially is the threat of uh, resolving Ancestral Recall. You know, come think of it. Uh, and yeah, of course, there's the Ubiquitous Swords to Plowshares, the best white removal ever made, arguably. And okay, so here is Mana Leak. Yeah, I cannot counter that. The thing is, that makes it a bit different from the old school, is that there is no such uh, fast mana and a tremendous card advantage. That would be possible. Yeah, there is impulse, but you know, it's mostly card filtering rather than drawing. But you know, having some choice is also important for our opponent. So, so far, so far, I think AI is playing this uh, deck quite properly. So, okay. Here is Rutwala. And there is impulse. Again, I don't know what our opponent is getting. There are six cards. Looks quite scary. So, let's try that. Okay. Did draw some cards. And there is one more impulse. That's crazy. Wait, what is this? Fact or fiction? Okay. So, yeah, what should we do? All right, then. Divide cards into piles. Now, counter spell impulse. The last impulse, I guess. Huh, I don't know. Maybe we don't want our opponent to have counter spell. I don't know. Maybe it's silly, you know, it's one of the cards that some people hate because it's just so difficult to play against it. And if you take too much time thinking about it, it just seems counterproductive. I don't know. Right, we need, need a discard outlet. And, uh, you know, we even have so many counter spells, then we can easily fight against our opponent. And, uh, okay, was it just a hard cast? Yeah, it was a hard cast. So obviously I will not 
let it resolve. Because you know in cycling that's a really cool thing that you can do with the wide decree. All right, so why not attack again? Pump. Okay, here is the first man land that we see. Our opponent, really nice one. Seven cards. Okay, we can actually. Oh, we have two. We have two deep analysis. Okay. Doesn't even counter. That even seems weird. Okay, we have 10 cards, 10 cards. So maybe this is the discard outlet we were waiting for. Isn't it? I think it is. Impulse again. Yeah, so for free, I will cast this. I will also discard uh, these two Roar of the Worm tokens. You know, it's not bad, not bad. Oh, Wrath of God, Wrath of God. Okay, um, do we want to counter that? Because, you know, our opponent has a 2-1 look. Yeah, okay, I will want to counter that. Wait, how many cards do we have? Eight. Uh, our opponent can still be able to counter what we have. Okay, yeah, so let's do... Sadly, for three mana, circular logic. And, yeah, it did work. It did work. Our opponent didn't have or just didn't cast um, one more counter spell. So, yeah, I will attack with both. And our opponent doesn't do anything. I'll just do this. And swords to plowshares. Swords to plowshares our root waller. Um, yeah, we have three counter spells, essentially. Let's see. I'm just hoping that our opponent will use counter spell on that. No, didn't use counter spell. Okay, here is one more Earth of God. I'm fine with that. But, you know, it's too early to celebrate because you know how these decks work. They can even have one life and uh, still win. And, okay, again, our opponent is doing the wrong thing. So if you know that you are playing against a deck with counter magic, you shouldn't probably use that mode. You should use cycling instead. Okay, so just very, very good stuff for me. Again, let's not overcommit to the board. Let's remember, yeah, we will play Arrogant Worm for three as well. And uh, we even have some kind of a um, protection, meaning that there is circular logic. So, yeah, it looks like we won, didn't we? Because we even have a lot of counter magic. So our opponent will activate Fairy Conclave, blocking Aquamoeba. But uh, we will just pump this guy. So, yeah, overall, again, I don't know what our opponent had in the hand. And, yeah, I will not give this hand, of course. Ah, this one is not good either. Should we mulligan to five? Ah, uh, yeah, I think we must mulligan to five, which is a very bad start. Maybe like this. But yeah, uh, as I was saying, as I was saying, I simply believe uh, that our opponent, of course, didn't play perfectly. You know, if you saw the hand, you would probably be able to tell whether it was the case or not, whether the plays were really uh, more or less okay or incredibly suboptimal, you know, as to uh, the choices that our opponent was making, what to counter, what to... Uh, ignore. But the thing is that we saw the white decree being played with all mana tapped. And okay, here is Wrath of God. So now, as I usually like to say, when it comes to AI, at least here in Forge, and I think generally speaking, it goes like this. So aggro is the best, so AI is usually quite good at playing aggro. Woo, there is humility! Didn't expect that. It looks very bad. It looks very bad. We won't be able to do anything against humility. Whoa, I'm scared. I mean, yes, yeah, so this guy, of course, is 1-1. One, one, but what about the others? 
Yeah, so let's just cast this 1-1 one, one Mongrel. You know, paradoxically we can still win, but it will be very difficult. Okay, so let's not forget that this is just a 2-1. Wait, I mean, each creature loses abilities is a 1-1 one, one creature. It is a 1-1 one, one creature, isn't it? Wait. If it's 2-1, it's, it's just cheating. Whoa, okay, okay, so yeah. Humility is one of those cards, as I know, that is very, very difficult to process, uh, you know, for AI and for judges. I know that this is a kind of a test as to how well people know the rules, how well the rules work. But I think that Fairy Conclave should not be a 2-1 blue creature. I mean, in terms of layers, how exactly does it work? You know, we will look it up later. But I don't think that this should take precedence over humility. And yeah, here is also Wrath of God. Okay, so, so far, so far, uh, pretty bad. The situation is pretty bad for us. Our opponent, however, has just two cards. Uh, there isn't much we can do. We have got some counter magic. We don't have wonder, do we? No. Which means that... But why can't we trade with the fairy conclave? I actually think we can attack. I would be fine with that. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, all of the bad cards, all of the bad cards that you can imagine. I don't want Mishra, especially because it's going to be, again, proper 2-2. Impulse... I don't know. That's probably the first pile. And this is the second pile. Yeah, so chose the bigger pile. Which I think was the right thing to do. Right, so let's attack. Activate Fairy Conclave. I might even want to bounce that. Why don't we bounce that? You know, three. Okay. Swords, yeah. Sadly, sadly. Where is my mana? Where is my mana? Still getting smashed by the Manland. And yeah, don't have anything to cast here. There's only one copy of Humility, as I remember. Our opponent has a full hand almost, so no way for us to get past that. Conclave attacking again. Okay. So, no attacks. Right, we can try to discard Wonder. Let's try to... Yeah, I mean, that's silly, right? We cannot discard Wonder because the abilities don't work. The abilities do not work. Let's not forget that. Okay, we trade it. We trade it. So, yeah, I will just cast Wonder. Here is the Mishra. Okay. Yeah, no, the problem is that I cannot really attack now, can I? Because Mishra is 2-2. Two, two. Again, arguably, I would say. Wow, these games can take quite a long time, because we also have some controlish elements. Uh, counter, I will counter your counter. Okay. So, look where... Quite in a good position, I would say. That is, until our opponent casts Breath of God. Wait, it's only six mana. Okay, I thought I had so much mana. Didn't even count. Okay, I will attack with both. All right, so now we can finally cast it. I'm sure it's getting countered. Of course, it is getting countered. And yeah, there's just two points, two points of damage. Where do we get it from? Let's just hope that our opponent uses other car wastes. 
Even though that would be silly to hope that's going to happen. Uh, really, really scared of uh, Wrath of God that I think is coming soon. Okay, uh, we can hard cast Arrogant Worm. All right, three creatures, three creatures. So now the question is, does our opponent have removal or board wipe? If not, then we actually win. Ooh, look, look, we have got a lot of counter magic. So attack with three guys. Yeah, we won, we won. Perfect, perfect. So, um, yeah, then again, as you understand, if you're a regular watcher of this channel, uh, it's not always that the 4GI makes the best decisions, but uh, that's what it is, and uh, it's a nice way to quickly see this deck in action. Thank you for watching. There will be a lot of pre-modern content in the future as well, but of course, we will also stick to old school. So I will see you around on this channel. Bye.